Caesar and his apes are forced into a deadly struggle with a human army. Following the apes' devastating losses, Caesar confronts his darker instincts and embarks on his own heroic quest to avenge his kind. This film combines extreme action with emotional scenes that will tug at your heartstrings. It has been 15 years since the deadly simian flu virus swept across the globe. That virus caused the death of billions of people. It led to a rapid evolution of intelligent apes. Caesar was their leader, and Koba was his right-hand man. Koba's betrayal of the apes, however, sparked a new conflict. Caesar is currently hiding with his apes to avoid capture. The film begins with a group of soldiers moving silently through the forest in search of the rebel apes. Red, an ape, is assisting them, and the troops refer to him as Donkey. Red and another ape loyal to Koba are assisting human soldiers in their attempt to capture Caesar. The soldiers begin their attack on the base. But the apes counterattack with incredible force, throwing spears and shooting at the soldiers riding on horses. Red, along with a few surviving soldiers, is taken hostage. Caesar comes to talk to the soldiers. He forgives them and sends them back to their camp unharmed. He wants to send a message to their commander that the apes are not aggressive. Red, meanwhile, breaks free from winter and rushes back to the human camp. Caesar's elder son, Blue Eyes, and his partner Rocket arrive back at their hiding place. Rocket and Blue Eyes have found a new place for apes, a desert, where they can live peacefully, away from humans. Caesar is happy that his whole family is finally together again. Blue Eyes meets his mother and younger brother. His old friend, Lake, also meets him again. All apes are happy to see Blue Eyes and Rocket. The apes plan for the future of the tribe. Winter fears the humans and proposes they must leave that night. But others oppose it, saying that they need time to plan properly. Caesar says, it is important to find a safe passage as so many apes will attract humans' attention. That night, while the primates are asleep, Colonel McCullough and his soldiers come during the darkness to kill Caesar. The apes are not prepared for this attack. The troops are slain, and McCullough shoots Caesar's wife, Cornelia, and their elder son, Blue Eyes. A devastated Caesar discovers his family has been killed. Determined to avenge their deaths, he pursues McCullough, who has escaped through the waterfall. As McCullough attempts to flee, Caesar catches up to him and is about to attack when McCullough cuts the rope that holds the bridge together. Caesar plunges into the river below and is nearly swept away by the strong current. Despite this close brush with death, Caesar still survives and continues his chase after McCullough. The events of that night now haunt Caesar, who is enraged at the death of his wife and son. His younger son escapes death by hiding behind the walls. Still, Caesar cannot forget what happened or forgive those responsible. He is filled with rage and decides to take revenge by killing Makala. After returning to his base, Caesar orders the other apes to go toward the desert and find shelter there. He asks Lake to take care of his younger son and finds Makala. The rest of the apes move toward the desert, searching for a new place to live. Maurice, an orangutan, Rocket, a chimpanzee, and Luca, a gorilla, all follow Caesar, despite his refusal to let them come with him, as they want to guard their leader. The apes continue their journey, but stop when they come across a man in the wilderness. That man tries to shoot them. Caesar, quick to respond, swiftly ends the man's life. When they enter his house, they find a little girl in her bed, visibly scared of the apes. Maurice picks up a rag doll from the floor and kindly offers it to the girl. Here we see that the girl cannot speak, just like Maurice. As they are about to move on, Nova sees the man's dead body. The viewers can only speculate that perhaps that man was her father. Caesar is unwilling to take the girl with them. But Maurice says they cannot leave her behind, all alone. So, Caesar allows the girl to come with them. Initially, the girl does not trust Caesar as she senses his hostility toward humans. Caesar also is grumpy with her presence. But slowly, the girl wins the apes' trust with her bravery. The four apes come across a military camp, and Caesar sees that Winter has switched sides and joined the humans. They catch Winter alone, and he tells them that Red had promised his life would be spared. That's why he betrayed apes and joined humans. Red then informs humans where the apes are hiding from McCullough and his troops. Caesar immediately realizes their danger when Winter says that the humans are heading toward a border. He quickly put his hand over Winter's mouth, stopping him from shouting for help. Winter becomes unconscious. Caesar is determined not to let McCullough and his men find them, so he decides they must move quickly. Caesar leads his troops away from the camp, hoping to reach safety before the humans realize what has happened. 
they move as fast as they can through the forest. Each step is heavy with fear and the hope that they will make it to safety before humans discover them. Caesar has another nightmare about Koba that night. Koba's scarred and bloody form repeats his final words, haunting Caesar in his sleep. He can't shake the dread that fills him and the memory of Koba's betrayal. The group of apes comes upon a gruesome sight when passing through the mountains, three bodies of soldiers lying in the snow. One has a faint pulse and is still alive. Caesar kneels beside him and attempts to ask why he was shot, but the man is unable to speak, no words come out of his mouth. Finally, Maurice says that the man will not make it, so Caesar resolves to put him out of his misery. A heavy burden lies on Caesar's shoulders, this power to decide between life and death. The memory of Koba looms in his thoughts, but ultimately, he is determined to take revenge for his family by killing Makala. The apes climb a nearby tower and observe the area. Suddenly, they notice a small creature in a jacket stealing one of their rifles and running away on one of the horses. They give chase, eventually having the creature cornered in an abandoned building. The creature is unveiled as a small ape who says his name is Bad Ape. He offers his jacket to the girl, Nova, as he notices she is cold. Bad Ape can speak, just like Caesar, and informs him that he was living in a zoo when the virus broke out. The humans used to get angry with him and called him Bad Ape. That's how he got his name. Bad Ape provides the group with food that is labeled California Border, coming from a human zoo or quarantine camp. When the apes ask, he confirms the food source. Bad Ape provides some comical moments in this emotionally charged part of the movie. When the apes reach the military settlement, they are attacked. Luca tries to kill the soldier to protect Caesar and gets killed in this effort. Caesar boils with rage, but he knows that if he follows Koba's path of vengeance and anger, he will only cause more death and destruction. In the heat of the moment, he can't help but think back to the moment Lucas sacrificed his life for him. Caesar laments that this is why he wanted to come alone, to protect his people from harm. Even Nova, moved by Lucas' selflessness, sheds a tear. Caesar realizes that he must remain strong and not let his hatred for the colonel consume him. He must continue fighting for peace and justice, that is what Luca would have wanted him to do. He knows that he must stay true to himself and remember Luca's ultimate sacrifice. Caesar goes to the human camp alone at night and finds two apes suspended on a mountainside overlooking the camp. One of them informs him that the ape camp has been seized, and they are working like slaves. Suddenly, Red comes from behind and hits Caesar with his rifle butt. Caesar becomes unconscious. When Caesar comes around, Colonel McCullough is standing there. Here, you can feel the anger and hatred burning like a fire in Caesar's eyes. He demands an apology for the venomous act of killing his family. McCullough looks regretful as he admits that he had meant to kill Caesar. He apologizes, but it's too little too late for Caesar. His life will never be the same, the pain and hatred are still too fresh in his mind. He knows there can never be a true resolution to this situation, but he's determined to take some form of justice into his own hands. The captured apes are put to work with Caesar, Lake, and Cornelius in separate cages. The apes must continue building the wall despite not getting any food or water. Red whips an old ape, but Caesar jumps in to take the punishment in his place. When McCullough sees this, he shoots the old ape and tells Caesar if apes stop their work, he will kill them one by one. Caesar pleads for his comrades to be given food and water, but McCullough threatens to kill more. Lake and the other apes start their work again to save Caesar. This is perhaps the best scene of the movie where you see so many emotions at work. Fear, courage, loyalty, and the burning anger and helplessness of Caesar. Preacher and Red escort Caesar in chains to Colonel McCullough's office. Caesar urges McCullough to provide the apes with food and water. The colonel retorts that Caesar intended to kill him, so he is justified in his cruel behavior toward apes. Caesar insists that he showed mercy by sparing his men. The colonel then reveals his personal story, his son was a soldier in his army infected with the simian flu and began losing his voice. McCullough understood that everyone was regressing into a primitive state, so he had to kill his son and the other soldiers. He then shares his intention of building the wall to protect his faction from another military force coming to put an end to his regime. The captured apes are finally given food and water, with Caesar being the exception. He again hallucinates Koba. In his nightmare, he sees Koba asking him to join him. Meanwhile, Maurice, Rocket, Bad Ape, and Nova observe the camp from a distance. Nova ventures into the camp and reaches Caesar's cage. She provides him with food and water and drops her doll in Caesar's cage to comfort him. 
Soldiers begin to approach, and Caesar indicates Nova to hide. Rocket steps forward as a distraction. Unfortunately, the soldiers catch hold of Rocket. The next morning, when they come to take Caesar for work, McCullough notices something in his cage and finds Nova's doll. He keeps the doll with him. Maurice and Bad Ape press on with their plan, hoping to reach the camp undetected. They manage to dig a tunnel, but soon they realize that they have reached a water source and there is a risk of flooding the tunnel. To prevent this, they take all necessary precautions and seal off the area to stop the water from entering. With the tunnel now secured, Maurice and Bad Ape continue their mission, determined to free Caesar. Knowing that their actions are for a greater cause gives them the courage and strength to fight for what is right. Caesar and Rocket join forces to find a way to reach the other cage and save the ape children. Meanwhile, Maurice and Bad Ape dig their way to the camp. To create a distraction, Rocket throws Pooh at one of the guards before Bad Ape drags him underground. The apes free the children and escape through the tunnel. Caesar finds his younger son Cornelius and embraces him. As they prepare to leave, Caesar admits to Rocket that he shares Koba's trait of not letting go of his hatred for the colonel. He returns to McCullough's office to kill him. Missiles rain down on the camp as a rival military force launches its attack. Caesar rushes to Colonel McCullough's office and finds him drunk. As McCullough attempts to speak, he finds he cannot speak. Caesar picks up a gun and the colonel takes hold of his hand, trying to make him pull the trigger. Despite the situation, Caesar cannot bring himself to do it. McCullough takes the gun and shoots himself in the head. Meanwhile, the other apes escape while Caesar attempts to rejoin them. As he grabs a grenade belt, he is shot in the shoulder by Preacher. Red notices this, and one soldier demands a launcher from him. In a moment of redemption, Red turns on the humans, firing at Preacher before he can finish Caesar. Another soldier kills Red. Caesar takes the grenade and throws it at a fuel tank, destroying it and causing an explosion that demolishes the facility. He manages to escape through a tunnel. Caesar arrives at the apes' camp as other militants celebrate the downfall of Alpha Omega. Some soldiers spot Caesar and are about to fire their weapons when an avalanche begins rolling down the mountain. Caesar and other apes, with Nova and Maurice, quickly climb the trees for safety as the avalanche sweeps away the rest of the human soldiers. The apes and Nova continue their journey until they reach a new fertile land. The apes are overjoyed. Caesar, accompanied by Maurice, pauses to catch his breath and observes apes celebrating their home. Maurice notices blood on Caesar's body and his severe wound. As Caesar is dying, he tells Maurice to take care of Cornelius. Maurice assures him that his son will understand who his father is and the sacrifices he made to protect his tribe. With that promise, Caesar dies peacefully. Thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe to help our channel grow. Turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos. See you in the next one.